Good morning. I'm like Brother Carl said, I, I'm glad to be in church this morning. Uh, I, I'm, uh, we went to church the last several Sundays, but uh, I'm glad to be in the sanctuary this morning. Amen. Uh, as he says, there's something special about, uh, about being in the, in the church, but uh, I, I'll say that you can have church. Amen. You don't have to be in the house to have church. But uh, I'm glad to be here, and that's, that's a, it's a great privilege and a great opportunity to be able to assemble this morning. Amen. And again, I say rejoice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're going to sing 287. I, I know that that's the Judy Becky. Uh, we've, uh, we, we're having to do things a lot different this morning, but uh, we'll get by, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll lift the Lord up anyway. Uh, I know that uh, you don't have your songbooks, and we had to take those out just to have, keep them having to sanitize everything, and I'll have to say, I uh, don't know if they're here or not, but uh, Melissa and, and Cheryl, I know she's here, uh, went above and beyond to sanitize everything over the week, and we appreciate that very much. It's, it's a lot of extra effort to do that, but they've done a wonderful job, and, and uh, we, we appreciate that very much. I'm living in Canaan now. Egypt was once my home, I was a slave. Helpless and sin did roam, love life did crave, but when I looked up to heaven's door, Christ came to save, I'm living in Canaan now, living in Canaan's side, crossed over Jordan's wide flat. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Day is my plea daily walking close to thee let it be dear lord let it be Amen. <clears throat> thank you lord praise your name for the breath that I breathe. Thank you, Lord, for every blessing I've received. Please keep me humble and 
to work for thee. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I needed you so bad. You saved my soul, and I'm so glad. Please use me, Lord, that's my plea. Let the light shine in me so the whole world may see. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I've been mauled when I pray. But I don't care what people say. Thank you, Lord, you've been so good to me. Please keep me humble, and Lord, send me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I need saved my soul and I'm so glad yeah. please use yeah. me Lord that's my plea let the light shine in me so the whole world may see thank you Lord for saving me thank you this this morning or I washed it and the feet of the time it's now for battered and scarred and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on those violins but he held it up with a smile said what am I bidding good folks who will start the bidding for me a dollar dollar then two only two the two dollars who will make it three three dollars once three dollars twice no, from the room, far back, a gray-haired man forward and picked up the bowl, and then wiping the dust from the old violin, tightening the loose strings, he played a melody, pure and sweet as caroling angels sung. The music ceased, and the auctioneer with a voice that was quiet and low said, uh, what have I bid for the old violin? And he held it up with the bowl. A thousand, two thousand, who'll make it three? 3,000, twice going, going, gone. The people cheered, but some of them cried. We do not quite understand what change it's worth. The old auctioneer smiled and said the touch from the master's hand. Many a man with life out in tune and battered and scarred and sin, he's auctioned cheap to the thoughts of the crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, he travels on. He is going once, going twice. He's going and almost gone, but the master comes and the fullest crowd can't quite understand the worth of a soul. 
and the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand. We need the touch of the master's hand. It's nice. For all the pretty sunsets and each peaceful stream, for every little songbird you send my way to sing, and in my barren desert where nothing else grows. freshness of the morning and the cool of the day for the place in my memory you wash my sins away now this is good for you precious holy spirit i feel down in my soul And that's worth that's more awesome. than me than every other road than every other road Lord glad to know that whatever's going on in this world that the peace and contentment the Lord can keep this world can't I right. thank and praise Amen. 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 Amen.
Christ sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. So good to be in church this morning. So good to uh, fellowship together, and uh, it's it's such a blessing. I've uh, certainly uh, enjoyed the service. Enjoyed the service Wednesday night, and uh, this is this is a little different. It's a whole lot different. I, I'll be honest with you. It's it seemed like it's a whole lot different, uh, but um, I think it'll it'll be what we make of it. If we let the Lord take control, then uh, it'll, it'll be good. Amen. But if uh, uh, we, we let the circumstances uh, bog us down and, and, and take precedence over uh, our worship, then, then that'll, that'll be what we'll, uh, we'll give attention to. But uh, this morning, I've, uh, I enjoyed what J.D. said. It, it was a blessing. It was, uh, uh, that's so true, ain't it? Ain't it, uh, ain't it true the way that... Uh, that's the way that we are sometimes with the Lord, and That's and, all we are. and 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 you can you can almost visualize in your mind the Lord kind of shaking His head at us, yeah. and uh, uh, they need taught, they need uh, they need directed, they need help in uh, in everything uh, that we do, and then when we mess up, then that's uh, uh, certainly the Lord corrects us, and I'm glad that He does. Uh, now the Bible says if uh, if we're not uh, if we're not chastised, we're not any of His, and uh, I'm glad that we uh, we are uh, in the family of God this morning. I don't want to get in a hurry. If you've got a testimony this morning, I don't I don't want to jump ahead of anybody. If you want to testify and mind the Lord, uh, you go ahead and do that. We'll get to the preaching here after a while. <coughs> uh, I, I, I'm not going to preach on the coronavirus this morning. Uh, that's been preached on probably for. Uh, 10, 15 weeks now. Uh, I didn't know anything about it before it came along, and, and I know, probably know more about it now than I, I care to know, but uh, it, it, uh, it is what it is, and uh, the Lord's brought us through to this point, and, uh, I'm, I, but I have got a thought or two while you're turning in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is where we'd like to start at and maybe go over into Hebrews a little bit. Uh, down through the time, I'm going to be real honest with you, I've, I've looked at uh, several things that took place down through our uh, 
uh, history. And there's been, uh, I, I know there's, there, there's people that's well-versed in history and, and so on. And, and, um, but I've looked back at several things that we've, we've endured in our world that uh, uh, down through the, the, the ages of time. And uh, there's been pandemics. There's been epidemics. And there's been things that happened in the world. There's been, uh, there's been catastrophes that's happened. There's been earthquakes. There's been tornadoes. And uh, there's been great uh, natural disasters that's taken place. And I, I have found usually down through the, the historical times that most people at, during those times ran to the church. This is one time that they closed the church. Uh, now here, here I say that because that uh, here's what I'd like to say. This is what worries me. Closing the doors on a church house don't worries me as much as not being able to have church. That worries me. Uh, I don't like having to close the doors on the church house. I promise you as pastor... It pained me through a lot of prayer and a lot of uh, 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 consulting the Lord of, of how to do that. Here's what worries me. Is that duration of time that people let up. People then begin to wax a little bit colder. Is that God's plan? No, sir, brother. That's the devil. No, sir. You're exactly right. The devil's plan is during this is for people to let up. Amen. Now, when you let up and you, you, uh, you say, well, we're not having church on Sunday morning in the house. Well, you've been right, but we've had church, brother. Every, we've not missed a service. Amen. Now, if you've missed a service today, it's not the Bethany church fault. Amen. Now, I want to tell you today that... What worries me and concerns me is this particular instance, people will run from the church rather than running to the church. That worries me. Now, I'm not saying that happened in every case. I know it's happened in a few cases. Amen. I do know that. Now, time will tell. Time will tell. Now, I, I believe that God's plan is for us to come together and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. I know what the scripture says, and that's what I'll follow. Amen. And uh, I pray this morning that you'll, uh, uh, you, you'll pray for us, and, and I ask you to do that. This is what's been on our heart for the, for the past little while in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, uh, this is a particular chapter in the Bible that the great apostle Paul has written to uh, the, the, the folks over in Corinth. Amen. Now, uh, listen, if you read about what was taking place in this particular uh, location or in this church, you'll find that they had a lot of trouble. and They had a lot of problems. Amen. Yeah. And uh, uh, Paul had to write some things that <coughs> I believe was, uh, <coughs> was a, a little bit uh, <coughs> out of the ordinary, if you will, because uh, he didn't have to address it in some other places. Amen. But when Paul talks about uh, uh, the Lord's Supper and over uh, when, uh, when, when he talks about that in, in chapter 11 and, and, and some things that was taking place there in the church that ought not be, then Paul had to write very direct instructions to the church. Amen. And he told them what they needed to do and, 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 and he gave them guidance. Amen. Of what they needed to do. Now, we get to the point here in chapter 15 and this is a resurrection chapter. If you read that. Yeah. And, and I, I'm glad for the resurrection today. Amen. I, 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 I've, uh, I, I tried to preach last Sunday and, and, and uh, the fullness of his glory. And, and I want to preach this morning about the benefits of his resurrection. Amen. I believe there's some benefits that comes along with the risen Savior that uh, a lot of people don't live in. Amen. I, I believe that. Uh, but uh, let me, I'm going to read just uh, probably more than I usually do. And, and we'll try to get where we like to go. Amen. <clears throat> the Bible says in verse 1, chapter 15, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto yeah. you, 
lest ye have believed in vain. Now, keep that word in mind, vain, because it's used several times throughout this chapter. Amen. And, and he said, For I delivered unto you, uh, first of all, which I also received. Amen. How that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And that he was buried and he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And, and that he was seen of Cephas and of the twelve. And after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once. Uh, uh, of whom the greater part remaineth unto this present. But some are fallen asleep. Uh, but he said after that he was seen of James and then of the apostles. Uh, he said the last of all he was seen of me also. As one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle uh, because I persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Now you hear that quoted quite a bit, don't you? Amen. By the grace of God, he said, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly that they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, uh, uh, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or, on, or they, so we, we preach, so ye believe. Now listen to this. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, yeah. how, are, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead. Now Paul's going somewhere with this. Amen. He said in verse 13. He said if there be no resurrection of the dead. Then Christ is not risen. Amen. He, in verse 14. And if Christ. Listen to this. If Christ uh, be not risen. Then our preaching is vain. Uh, and he said your faith is also vain. Amen. Uh, yet we are, are found for a uh, false witness of God because uh, uh, we have testified of God that he raised up Christ. Amen. And whom uh, he raised not up. If so, be that ye the dead rise not. Uh, he said in verse 16, For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. And he said, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Amen. Now, keep that in mind too. Verse 20 says... But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit. Well, bless the Lord. First fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also uh, uh, the resurrection of the dead. Now, uh, I'd I like to, to just for a minute before we go over into the book of Hebrews, i like for just a minute. Now, uh, when Paul starts out here, Paul begins to say uh, uh, that he began to teach, amen, and those things that Paul uh, had preached preached unto the people. Amen. Now, hey, listen, you know the story about Paul and you know uh, what Paul's life was. If you read about the great apostle Paul, amen, you'll find uh, as he said there, he said he persecuted the church. Amen. Now, I believe that Paul was ashamed of this. I believe yeah. that Paul uh, uh, suffered because, he, because of this. Amen. Uh, but he said in verse 9, he said, uh, I am the least of the apostles. And he said, I'm not meet to be called an apostle. In other words, he's saying, I'm I'm not worthy to be an apostle of the Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, but he said, amen, he said, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, uh, uh, but the grace of God which was with me. Uh, I listen, friend, he goes on. Uh, and he said in verse 12, now if Christ be preached uh, uh, that he rose from the dead, uh, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Uh, uh, you'll find that there was a group called the Sadducees. Uh, uh, they didn't believe in the resurrection. Amen. I, I, they didn't believe that Christ got up from the from the grave on the third day, uh, and they persecuted and they found fault. Amen. Because uh, uh, they didn't think that Christ uh, 
I would get up from the, from the grave. Amen. But listen to what he said in verse 14. He said, and if Christ be not risen then, our preaching is vain and your faith is vain. Listen, friend. You know what the word vain really means? Amen. It means that it's just empty. There's nothing there. In other words, what Paul's saying, what I preach to you, amen, it's empty. It don't mean anything. If he didn't get up from the grave on the third day, what I'm telling you today, amen, what Paul is saying, what I'm preaching to you, amen, this morning is of the scripture. What I read to you is of the word of God. But I'm telling you this morning, if Christ, amen, I didn't get up from the grave on the third day, what we're trying to tell you today, it's all empty, amen. And not only that, your faith is vain too, amen. What's your faith in today? What are you really trusting in today? Are you trusting in a tomb that's got the bones of the remains in it, amen? I'm trusting in the empty grave amen. because he got up on the third day. I bet he goes on. I like what he said in verse 19. He said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable, amen. You know there's some miserable people in the world today, amen. They'll find fault with the church, amen. They'll find fault with the preacher. They'll find fault with this and fault with that. You know when I found out, brother, that I get miserable, it's usually not a fault with the church. It's not usually not a fault with the preacher. It's usually a fault with me, amen. And you know what? My dissatisfaction will make you miserable, amen. But he said, if in this life only we have... Hope in Christ would be of all men most miserable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them which slept. What Paul's saying, there's proof, amen. The infallible proofs, I believe it says over in the book of Acts, that he got up from the grave, amen. And he gets over here to this point. Paul is proving, amen, that what he's telling them, amen, is the truth. What he's preaching to them, that Jesus was crucified, put on the cross cross, amen, and got up on the third day. What I'm telling you today, church, there's so many people that'll come to the altar and they'll leave things on the altar, amen, and they'll never pick up the cross. And brother, listen, I'm telling you today, there is benefits in the resurrection, amen, of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not living in the benefits of the resurrection today, you might be of all men most miserable, amen. Brother, there's benefits in following God today. These benefits today in trusting him uh, in the empty tomb and the empty grave. Amen. Uh, uh, there's benefits, brother. Uh, I'm telling you today, uh, if Jesus did not uh, uh, just go and die on the cross, uh, if he was put in the tomb, uh, uh, brother, listen, it all hinges uh, on the resurrection. Amen. Uh, he would just have been another man uh, if they took him and killed him uh, and put him on the cross. Uh, uh, but, brother, he would have been another man uh, if they just put him in the tomb. Uh, brother, listen, on the third day, uh, he proved that who he was. Uh, I'm telling you today uh, uh, that Jesus Christ uh, was God wrapped up in a fleshly body. Uh, uh, brother, listen, uh, he was God and manifested in his son. Uh, uh, brother, I'm telling you today, uh, uh, when you get saved, uh, uh, you'll get him. Uh, uh, you'll get the Father uh, and you'll get the Holy Ghost. Amen. As a package deal, bless the Lord. Uh, uh, brother, you don't go and get one without getting the others. I'm glad for the resurrection today. I'm glad for the empty tomb, amen. I'm glad that he got up the third day. And what Paul says, if all this, all this, we had hope of this and just in this life only, we'd be of all men most miserable. Now Paul's going somewhere with this. Paul established in, in the first part of this these are some of the infallible proofs. And he was buried, rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Listen to what he said in verse 5. That he was seen of Cephas and then the twelve. After that he was seen of about 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain in this, this present, but some are fallen asleep. Some has already died. Amen. But Paul said some are still alive today. That saw him. Paul is establishing some things. Let me skip over real quickly here to the last part of this 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And he begins to talk about some things. 
In verse 33, he said, Be, be not deceived, evil communication, corrupt good manners. Hey, <laughs> I've got that verse highlighted. Amen. Uh, wake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Um, he said, But some man will say, How are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? You know, there's a lot of people, Jimmy, in the world will question how this is going to take place. Amen. Jimmy probably is at the graveside of more people than that's ever been in here. Amen. And, and probably, no doubt, there's a lot of questions of what takes place when you take somebody and, and you, 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 you do go through the committal service and, and you put that body in the grave. Amen. There's a lot of question of what will take place. Amen. Uh, to that body. Is that the very end of that body? Amen. I, I want to tell you, listen church, amen. Uh, one of my favorite verses in the Bible that says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Uh, I'm telling you, my spiritual condition today is far Far more important than my physical condition is today. Uh, whether I'm saved, amen. Uh, it'll, mean, it'll, it'll make the difference of where you go when you die. Uh, but what will take place, amen. Uh, when this old earthly body, uh, the breath leaves it, amen. Uh, and we go back to the dust of the earth. Uh, uh, what will take place, listen, uh, uh, what Paul said. Uh, he goes on and he said, uh, in verse 39, uh, all flesh is not the same flesh, uh, uh, but there is one kind of flesh of men uh, uh, the flesh of beasts uh, another f of fishes and another of birds uh, uh, there's celestial bodies bless the Lord uh, and there's terrestrial uh, uh, but the glory of the celestial is one uh, and the glory of the terrestrial is another uh, uh, there is the glory of the sun uh, and the glory of the moon uh, and another glory of the stars uh, for one star different from another star in glory uh, uh, so is the resurrection of the dead uh, it's so in corruption. It's raised in incorruption. It's sown in dishonor. It's raised in glory. It's sown in weakness. And it's raised in power. Amen. It's sown a natural body. And it's raised a spiritual body. Bless the Lord. Amen. And it's sold. Amen. A natural body. And it's raised a spiritual body. And it's so written. The first man Adam was made a living soul. And the last man Adam, I, I was made a quickening spirit, amen. I, I'm telling you today, I, I, that last man, Adam, I, I be in Jesus Christ, amen, that made the quickening soul, the quickening spirit. How be it that it was not first which was spiritual, but that which is natural. And after that which is spiritual, the first man, well, the first man of the earth, earthy, and the second man of the Lord from heaven. As the earth earthy, such are they that are earthy. And as the heavenly, which are they which are heavenly. And we have borne the image of the earthy. <laughs> we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Listen to what he said in verse 50. He said, brethren, I say to you, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> I doeth in, not in corruption, uh, corruption, inherit in corruption. But he said, I show you a mystery. Uh, we shall not all sleep. Amen. Uh, as he talked about, some of those have already gone to sleep. Amen. Uh, he said, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. What's he really saying there? Uh, brother, there's going to be people. Amen. Uh, I still want to be here when the Lord comes back. Maybe this fellow Brad's talking about uh, in his lifetime. I'm telling you, church, uh, uh, we're at a condition and we're at a point today. Amen. In our world, brother, uh, uh, you need to be looking for him. Amen. Every day that you live, uh, uh, you need to be looking for the coming of the uh, of Christ. Amen. Uh, uh, but he said, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Uh, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ uh, are raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. You see, uh, uh, that old earthly man that you put in the earth, amen, uh, uh, that had the flesh on him, amen, and the bones that, uh, that gave up the life's breath, you're going to put him in the ground, amen. And he may go back to the dust of the earth. But somehow, some way, uh, when the trump of God shall sound uh, and the voice of the archangel, amen, uh, you know what will take place. Uh, that old earthy man that was in the earth, amen, uh, he'll get up from the grave, amen, and he'll be changed. Uh, he'll not be the old earthy man because uh, you're not going to have uh, the incorruptible.
corruptible man. I, I'm going to be inheriting the corruption, amen. I, I'm telling you today, I, I, we're going to be changed, amen, in the moment, I, in the twinkling of an eye. I, in the last trump, for the trump shall sound, I, and the dead shall rise, incorruptible, amen. I, and we shall be changed, I, I, because he said this, in, this corruptible must put on I, incorruption, I, and this mortal must put on I, immortality, amen. I, I, so, I, I, when the corruptible have put on incorruption, I, and the mortal shall put on immortality, I, I, then shall be brought to pass the saying I, I, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory, I, and O death, where is thy sting? I, o grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, I, and the strength of sin is the law. I, I, but I like what he says, thanks be to God, I, I which give us up the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, therefore, my beloved, uh, brethren, listen to this. Be steadfast, amen. Uh, uh, be immovable, uh, uh, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Uh, uh, for as much as you know that your labor uh, is not in vain. Uh, uh, you see what Paul is painting a picture of here uh, in the first part of this, amen. Uh, he begins to paint a picture of uh, uh, that what if there was a time uh, uh, that the Holy Spirit's not here, amen. Uh, and this world is completely empty, amen. Uh, uh, but you see, it's all vain. If Christ ain't raised from the dead. I, all this hope is in vain. Amen. I, I, what Paul is painting the picture of. I, I'm telling you today. I, I, brother, when you take the Holy Spirit out of the world, I, I don't want to be here. Amen. I, it'll be a wicked place, brother. I, I, you think it's bad today. I, I, you let God take the Holy Ghost out. I, I, brother, listen. I, I, you ain't seen bad yet. Amen. I, I'm telling you, brother, when God, amen, I, I tells his son, I, I go get my church. I, I, brother, listen. Son, uh, it'll all be gone then, amen. Uh, and I'm telling you, uh, it'll be a wicked place then. That's why he said, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You see, there is benefits to living in the, in the resurrection of the Savior. Now, if, if you're not living in that and you're not, uh, if you're not, for lack of a better term, taking advantage of that, if you're saved, amen, then you're missing out on something. Now, I, I believe that uh, what Paul was really getting to here, he established that Jesus rose from the dead. And he established that, amen, in the first part of this chapter. And then he goes on over in the latter part of that chapter and he establishes how that you and I, amen, are going to get up from the grave and, and the resurrection of man, amen. And, and, and he's likening that into the resurrection of the body of Christ. Uh, uh, but brother, I'm telling you today, the church, amen, uh, is the body of Christ, amen. And when that last trump shall sound, then, brother, I'm telling you, it'll be time for his body, his church, to rise, amen, and meet him in the air and go home to be with the Lord. Now, I believe that, uh, you know, there's a lot of things. The old, the old devil will come along, and, and I believe that there's a lot of things that he'll try to take out of you. And he'll try to take the resurrection out of you if you'll let him. And he'll try to take some things out of a Christian. Amen. I, I, listen. Now, the Bible says, greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. What does that really mean? That means that the Lord can put more in you than what the devil can take out of you. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you today, there's so many people that the devil just take everything out of them. And they don't live in the resurrection. And they don't live in the joy. And they become the miserable. We're of all men most miserable. And they, they, they become that. Amen. But let me let me let me turn real quickly over into the book of Hebrews, and and I'm not going to read anything over there, but some things that really come out to me as I studied this and, <clears throat> and begin to read about this, and and the Bible talks about Jesus, and this is this is why he he was on the earth. It talks about him, and it talks about him after that he he was resurrected. Amen. But 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 Paul writes <clears throat> in the book of Hebrews about Jesus and how. How, how much more that Jesus was and 
than some things, amen. You know, Jesus was better than the prophets, amen. If you read the Bible and, and you'll find out that he was, uh, he was better than the angels, amen. He was better than the tabernacle and, and he was better than Noah and he was better than Abraham and the law and, and he was better than Moses, amen. You know, uh, the first miracle uh, that, that Moses had per, uh, performed there, amen, other than uh, when they crossed over on the Red Sea and, and the Bible says that he took the staff and he turned the water into blood, amen, and, yep. and, and, and then that he, I read you that he went up on the mountain there. You know the first miracle that Jesus done? Uh, uh, listen, uh, when Moses done this and he turned that water into blood, it really meant death and judgment, amen. Uh, yep. uh, but when Jesus, bless the Lord, uh, and the Bible says in John, when uh, the first miracle that Jesus done, he turned the water into wine, amen, and that represented life, amen, but it says there that Moses went up on the mound, up on Sinai, to get the law, and it says that when he came back down, amen, that there was 3,000 that was slew, slew there, brother, listen, that was, I believe, 50 days or 40 days or so after, in Pentecost, amen, and that was observed all the way up through into Christ, you know, the first Pentecost, Bless the Lord under Christ. Uh, they wasn't 3,000 killed. Uh, uh, but brother, they were 3,000 saved. Amen. Uh, over in the book of Acts. Uh, uh, brother, he was a whole lot more uh, uh, than what Moses was. Uh, he was a whole lot more uh, uh, than what the priest was. Uh, uh, when that priest would go in uh, and offer up the sin for the people. Amen. Uh, uh, Jesus was a whole lot more than that. Uh, uh, the Bible says uh, uh, that old priest would go in. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, probably every single day uh, uh, that that priest would go in there. Uh, uh, history says, uh, uh, well, bless the Lord, uh, uh, they would offer the blood uh, upon their, uh, upon the prayer of for the people, uh, uh, but the Bible says, uh, uh, brother, when uh, uh, when the old high priest would do that, uh, hey man, listen, he was offered up the sin uh, uh, for the people. Uh, uh, history says they wasn't a chair in there uh, uh, because the priest worked. Uh, uh, bless the Lord, uh, I was never done. Uh, uh, brother, he continually uh, had to go in uh, and offer up that sacrifice. Uh, his work was never done. Uh, he could never sit down. Well, bless the Lord, uh, uh, but when Jesus comes, uh, and he offered up his blood uh, on the cross, amen. Uh, and he ascended into heaven. Uh, uh, you know where he's at today. Uh, he's seated uh, at the right hand of the Father. What's that say? Uh, uh, brother, his work is done, amen. Uh, the sacrifice for sin uh, has been paid. You see, he's better than the priest. He's better. He was better than the first man, Adam. You know what happened with the first man, Adam? He fell. Amen. And you know what one of the you know what one of the curses was when Adam fell in the garden? There's going to be thorns. I said this before. I don't believe Brad. I don't believe he knew what a thorn was. I don't believe he'd ever seen one before. I don't believe he ever seen a thorn. Amen. Didn't know what it was until the curse come. But you know what happened? When Jesus was crucified on the cross <laughs> and they took the crown of thorns and they, they platted them and placed them on his head. Sure, that should have been Adam's cross. Amen. Yeah, sure, that should have been my cross. <laughs> and that should have been your cross. Amen. Yeah, I, I, you know what the other... You know what the other uh, uh, curse was? Uh, by the sweat of your face. Amen. Uh, uh, you know what the Bible says when Jesus went into the garden to pray? Uh, it said he prayed and his sweat became uh, as great drops of blood. Friend, listen. Uh, I'm telling you today, he was greater. Amen. Uh, uh, because Adam, uh, uh, because of his transgression, uh, uh, because of his sin. Amen. In the garden. Uh, I'm telling you because of what Jesus done uh, on the cross of Calvary today. Uh, it covered the sins of the world. Uh, it covered the sins of you and I. Amen. He was much more than what Adam was. Let me close with this. I read about this several times. Everybody knows the, the account of Jacob and Esau. And it, it says in, in one place here, it, it gives the account that That the uh, 
Esau sold his birthright. He sure did. Esau was a hunter. I believe the Bible called him a cunning hunter. He was a man of the field. And these boys were twins. And uh, came a time when their father was getting old and was going to die. And I believe that Jacob, <clears throat> Jacob's mother, told him to go and kill and dress an animal and bring it into his father. The Bible says that his father's eyesight was growing dim yep. and he couldn't see and he was getting old, ready to die. And he had, <clears throat> and he had a blessing that he was going to give to his son. And the Bible says that while Esau was gone, to kill the venison. Then Jacob then begins to try to look like and smell like and feel like, and feel like his brother Esau. And it says that he goes in and he and he begins to to to, to present that Jacob does and he presents that to his father and and his father then he says, "Art thou my son Esau?" You see, here, here, here's, here's what happened. <laughs> Jacob looked like Esau, and he smelled like Esau, but he sounded like Jacob. I don't, I don't believe he fooled him. In that. I believe that he recognized that he, he still sounded like Jacob. And then anyway... He, as he takes this and, and, and he, he, he takes the food and you know what he does? Then he puts the blessing on Jacob. And then comes Esau from the field. After the blessing had already been given to Jacob. Now you can say, boy, that's an atrocity. That, that, that should not have happened. But listen, friend, this was in God's will. Amen. This was the way that the, 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 the younger... The, it will, well, the, the elder will serve the younger. Amen. Now, I thought about that, and, and this is what really struck me is I'm going to close. You see, he, he looked like Esau, and he smelled like Esau, but he still spoke just like Jacob. And you see, isn't that just like a picture of what you and I are? You see, when I got saved, I sounded like me. But when the Lord then looks at me, you know what he sees? I look like the blood. Because my sins are covered by the blood. You see, I think it's just a picture of what you and I are. Amen. We're not the same person, church, that we was when we come to the altar and God washed our sins away. I, I still look like Rick. Amen. I still may act like him on the outside, but something on the inside changed him. Amen. And when I got saved, amen, I don't look from the outside to the Lord anymore than I did look like because I'm changed now. And because when he sees me, he sees the blood of his son. And you know what? Amen. Here's the blessing that I'll give you to a man. Uh, uh, brother, that uh, as he gave uh, Jacob the blessing. Uh, uh, brother, I'm telling you, when God sees his son's blood on your life, he will bless you. Amen. Here is the blessing. Amen. Because you're not the same person you used to be. You're different. And if you're not living today, in the resurrection, if you're not living in the promises of God, if you're not, if, if you're not taking I, my son in the fullness of his glory, amen, the emptiness of the tomb and the fullness of his glory, I'm telling you today, church, uh, there's more to this than coming and just making a profession, amen. Uh, uh, listen, if you want to live in his presence, uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to want that more than anything, amen. amen. If you want to live, amen, close to the cross, you'll have to give up some things, amen, and you'll have to sacrifice some things. But I'm telling you today, take up your cross and follow him. And trust him. The evidence of the resurrection of Christ 
was established. The resurrection of you and I as the body, amen, was established. But I'm telling you today, Jesus Christ was far much greater than anybody. You say, well, that didn't start through the New Testament. You need to read your Bible. Amen. I'm telling you, he's in there from cover to cover. He's in there from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. He is in there. And he's in there as the Savior of the world. Amen. Uh, there's so many types of Christ that, uh, that you can talk about uh, uh, from the Old Testament. Amen. Uh, until he was manifest in his glory. Amen. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, uh, when that rushing mighty wind come through, brother, I'm telling you, uh, uh, there was something given to the church today uh, that we don't have to go around with our head down. Amen. Uh, and we don't have to go around and defeat it. Bless the Lord. Uh, I'm telling you today, you can hold your head up and say, I am part of the family of the King. Amen. Man, and I'm glad to be saved today and I want to live in the power of his resurrection amen and I'm glad that I can do that I'm glad that you can do that but I can't live it for you and you can't live it for me we've got to live it for our own selves amen